final week of the preseason is here. A fourth exhibition game is a thing of the past. It's the Bears and the Browns, and it's coming up next on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage in the National Football League brings us to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Tonight, it's a preseason matchup here in Week 3 between the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis with you. And now we sit, CD, at week three of the preseason. And this is the one that the coaches probably think is pretty valuable, right? Certainly. This is the dress rehearsal. This is the one where your starters are going to play. You might even game plan a little bit more than you do with a normal preseason game. And then you've got to decide, do you bring them back after halftime and get them going again in the third quarter so they're ready to go when the regular season begins? I'm eager to see how these coaches will handle that. Santos now ready to get this one started. And off we go from Cleveland. This taken in at the goal line. The Browns on their way out now for the first time. And we'll also get a look at the player brought in from Houston to run this offense. And that's Deshaun Watson. And he makes it so difficult for all defenses because when he's got the ball, it's hard to say when a play is truly over because he can create from any spot on the field and in any situation, even when it appears that he's contained. When he's running your offense, a big play could arrive from any possible spot. They begin this drive with Chubb, and he'll power his way up near the 25. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Just what the Browns needed there, good for a gain of 17. I have to tell you, Brandon, I feel like a coach right now because I'm wondering why the angle route continues to be so effective when as an inside linebacker, you're always taught don't let someone cross your face. If they want to go outside, it's okay. But they make that outside fake, cut back inside, off into great success. A run for Nick Chubb. Oh, he sheds himself free. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Bottom line, when you play a runner with these talents, you've got to be able to wrap up and get him on the ground. Or the first person who gets there, hold him up long enough for the next wave to get there and get him down. Otherwise, he will continue downfield and find pay dirt. Now Cade York for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. The drive there only spanning three plays. And Nick Chubb the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. New York ready and here we go as he sends this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now here come the Bears, and at the helm is someone that they have a lot of hopes for leading this franchise. The 11th pick in 2021 out of Ohio State, Justin Fields. Justin Fields endured some literal growing pains his rookie season, taking hits and being forced to run for it behind a porous offensive line. 
but he also had moments where he showed his upside as a franchise quarterback. He did win two of his first three starts and had a 100-yard rushing game against San Francisco in Week 8. Several offseason changes in Chicago should help get Fields some help in Year 2. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 22. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he'll get this just across the 25-yard line. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. You know, last week I remember asking you, what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason? Now in week three, defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for guys that play with abandon. They just go out and make plays and kind of let their athletic ability take over in order for you to notice them. A gain of four, not enough, and it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. We're able to get the completion, but unfortunately not able to get the third down conversion there on that play. And I like how the defense approached that one. They knew where the first down marker was, and they decide whatever you want to have, you can. You're just not going to get the first down. Excellent tackling right there. Pilardi now on to punt as he sends this one away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. And a short three-yard pickup gets him up to the 15. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback on the expected passing situation. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. On the return is Pettis. A nice return that time of about 14 yards. And the Bears take over. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? A gain of three, second down. Fields now to throw. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open book beyond the first down marker to his receiver. But they just couldn't connect. And that will send them back to the drawing board. Throwing on third down. Fields. He'll get that complete. Cole Komet. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Fields to commit there for a Chicago first. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. They run the option here on first and 10. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. 
And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Well, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. Well, we'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. And just a yard to go here on second down. Now a give running left with Montgomery. And he gets it down to the 32. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Now a first down throw, Fields. Open man is Komet, the tight end. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. Now it's second and nine. Off the option, here's Montgomery. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now Fields. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there as that's batted down and incomplete. Perfect example of the kind of attitude you have to have to play defensive back in the NFL. You want to be the only defender around, and you want them to challenge you. And on that play, he came through. Now Fields is off, and on comes Cairo Santos for the Chicago field goal. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great play there. 64 yards. And the Browns take the block field goal and convert it into six points. So the problem's really starting to add up now. I mean, they try the field goal and happen to get a little bit closer, but the block and return make the situation worse. I like what you just said there. Just trying to get a little bit closer. I think mentally, that's why they were doing it, because really the three wasn't going to do them a whole lot of good, but they feel better about themselves now. They feel exponentially worse. The York on now for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. ready and here we go as he sends this one away taking it about the one and he brings us out past the 20 to the 24 holding receiving team Of course, they have the option, and they choose to not take the penalty. They like the results of the play that they just ran, and they elect to let them stand. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Back to throw, Fields. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. 
You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. Five yards. Now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Here's Fields. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, they can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Browns set to take over. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football. First and 10. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Now, a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. This is what defensive coaches ask of their defenders every single ball game. Get a hand on every throw and coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? The last run got nine. That leaves them with second and a yard. They'll run again with Hunt. Four yards the pick up, first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Chubb. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 115 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. They run again on first down, Chubb. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll try the air now with Watson. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. 
These offensive starters still out there in the second quarter. You would think the plan's for them to at least play into the third quarter, if not all the way through it. Yeah, it might go by feel if they have a... And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. From 19 yards away. And the Browns take a three-touchdown lead. Their first passing touchdown of the ball game, and they go to the big tight end in those sure hands, and he provides the score. So they look like they were focused on taking away other weapons, and he certainly made them regret that because he found the soft spot, ended up taking it to the end zone. Nice throw, too, to complete the play. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point by York is up and good. And that makes the score 21 to zip. That time, a nine-play drive, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. New York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And he'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. A reminder, opening weekend definitely in sight now. Thursday, September 8th, that's when it all gets going. The defending champs, L.A. Rams, hosting the team that many think could win the AFC, the Buffalo Bills. Charles and I will be there. And then we got some great matchups on that Sunday as well. Kansas City and Arizona, Raiders and the Chargers. And on Sunday night, Tom Brady, yeah, he's back. And his Bucks are heading to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Martin, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting the 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing. And they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They are not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. On fourth down, Michael Pilardi on to punt. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he fields it cleanly. A solid stiff arm. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Cleveland offense making their way out. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm. But I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. Now he's going to let it go deep right sideline. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. They give him a gain of 37. They started this drive with terrific field position, and it's going to get even better after that play. Had great options with where they started. So they decided to press their advantage, and it paid off. Set. 
So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. They go up the middle with Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Browns are able to widen their lead here in this first half. You talk about certain guys just having a nose for the end zone. He's one of them, and he was not going to be denied there. And defensively, especially in the red zone, you've got to be able to at least slow him down and hold on for dear life. But he's able to get out of a couple of tackles there, and not enough people got there in time. Pretty poor on the defensive side of the ball. A York now for the extra point. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. Well, it wasn't a one-play drive, but I think they'll take it. The scoring summary, two plays and into the end zone. New York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Chicago offense set to get started. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look, at, look to the quarterback, but sometimes there's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. The field's going to take this himself. And a loose football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Well, he was having success there, holding on to it on the option, but ultimately problems downfield, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, and this is a tough one because you know you'd prefer to have your quarterback either heading to the sidelines or getting down at the end of the play. But you've got an aggressive one. He's fighting for extra yardage, and he gets stripped there. You don't need him to be a hero in that situation. You want your quarterback taking care of himself. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. And we're at the 41, second and nine. On the ground, it's Chubb. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Boy, you hate to see this before the regular season even begins. We'll take a break and come back. More preseason action in a moment. Now Watson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Now Watson will step away, and out comes Cade York to handle this fourth down field goal try for the Browns. From the right hash, this from 53. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Snap it to Watson. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. 
And he's going to pick up the Browns first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play. And the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. And both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front. But somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. On the carry, it's Chubb. He will push his way down to about the 14. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Back to throw, Watson. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. A great effort there. Ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Browns will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. They have really had their way so far in the first half, but they wanted to continue to build on their lead. They know that no lead is safe in this league, so they decided to try their best to get one more as they headed into the half, and they got it done. The York on now for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. New York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And the Bears going to take over now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. On first down, it's Fields. Eluding the pressure right. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Fields. He rifles one that's intercepted. Put up by Greg Newsom. And the Browns are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. The Browns now going to take over late in this first half. Have a great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal. They'll certainly have the green light here. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And some room to run now. And he's got this down to the 35. 161 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. I think you'd have to say Nick Chubb, pound for pound, one of the most powerful runners in the NFL. He proved it there. And with a guy his size, you have to know defensively that arm tackles aren't going to fly with him. You have to be able to wrap up, or else he can just brush tacklers aside like they're not even there. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Watson. And that nearly intercepted. The free safety rolling into position, almost had it, but it's second down. But one thing we certainly know, he likes to take those risks deep downfield during games, coverage or not. The coverage was there on that one. No catch, but he's also fortunate. No turnover either. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. 
Deshaun Watson with his third touchdown pass of this first half. And the Browns would extend their lead here just before halftime. And just before the half ends, the prayer is answered defensively a disaster there. I know often we're surprised when this actually works. I mean, the excitement level goes way up, but maybe we shouldn't be because I know as a defender, you've got to play the ball in this situation, but you can't interfere with the receiver because, remember, it's a spot foul, and it'd be first and goal if it happens in the end zone, and you don't want to give up that play. Now, a little bit of hesitancy often works really well for offensive guys. Extra point by York is up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And no reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. All that remains is to snap this once and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a route. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. Week three of the preseason is here. Everyone wrapping up their exhibition schedule. No games for the league on Labor Day weekend. And then it all begins. The 17-game regular season gets underway on the Thursday after Labor Day with the NFL kickoff game. Meanwhile, for the Browns, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. Both of these coaching staff with some big decisions to make coming up as the preseason draws to a close. This second half is going to be filled with a lot of evaluation. And to bring it your way, we go back to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Our starters likely to be out there for the third quarter as we get back underway in this second half. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. And the Bears offense set to go to begin the third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. They got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. Yeah, this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Into the hands of Pettis, it's a jet sweep. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Draw play. Fields gives to Montgomery. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down for the Bears. Here's Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. 
And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. That is not going to be any help as they dump it behind the line of scrimmage. They lost two, and it brings up four. you got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football. Because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. Alexander Johnson there on the stop. As we surmise, Charles, most of the starting units still out there for this third quarter. First time this preseason that they played into the second half. And that's by design. Most of the time by this point of the preseason, you want them to go into the half, cool down, and then come back out and warm up to start the third quarter like you would a regular season game. That's exactly what they wanted to get done. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And he is going to have a Browns first down, maybe by about a yard as they find a way to convert on third and inches. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. And again, it's Chubb. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run. But I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, trying to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. He was over 100 receiving last week. He's over 100 now this week as he's got a first down as well. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. A couple of first downs have them to the 40 now on first and 10. Now they return to the ground game, Chubb. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 
193 yards rushing for him now as he closes in on a 200 yard day. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Here's the backup, Jacoby Brissett. Got a man here, it's Brian. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Give him 32 on the play. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long, and I would say that going along with that has been confidence because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them, and now it's been a real issue for them during this game. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They run right side with Hunt. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. That's good hard running right there on first and goal. That gets him down to the two and puts a lot more pressure on that defense. Again, it's Hunt. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Kareem Hunt taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. Well, when coaches come into a game preaching total team offense, CD, I think this is the type of play game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were cooking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And you go back to the early drives, you can just see that one squad was on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. A York now for the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So that one a long 11 play drive. And Kareem Hunt the one to finish it off as he did so with a touchdown run. New York ready and here we go as he sends this one away. On the return, it's Tristan Ebner from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just what silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny, I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario, like, what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big, you really have, like, one possession left, and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter. But do they? And he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run, have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. Here's Simeon. Now they go screen, it's complete. Oh, able to avoid him. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. 
Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? On first down, Simeon. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. The Bears on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, Simeon. And that is incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to, like a good golfer can check one up. In trouble here, and down he goes, back at the eight-yard line. It'll only be a loss of a couple, but the pressure gets home on first down. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Hunt. 47 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Now after the run by Hunt, here's first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 46. Hunt will try going up the middle. Treads it with a stiff arm. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. And carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. 
They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. First and 10 at the 11. Handoff up the middle, Hunt. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the eight. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They run again with Hunt. No gain on the play, and it's gonna bring up a third down. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Brissett sets to throw it. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Charles are still airing it out at this point despite that huge lead. And some people may be saying, well, why are they throwing the football? These guys, I guess, are just padding their stats at this point. Yeah, and a lot of big grins, I think, from people in their families, from themselves. You're exactly right. Pad the stats when you get an opportunity. It'll certainly help you come contract time. Well, no field goal attempts for him until the final quarter, but no hesitation on his end. He comes right out and nails his first field goal try. I give him a lot of credit, too, because he stood there the entire ball game, but has managed to stay with it both mentally and physically. When they called on him, he was ready, and he knocked it through the post. And he won't quite make it to the 25. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Browns are going to take possession of the football. Yet another mistake after the interception there. And gosh, you look up 